Hello, folks. So welcome back. I do not have any uh, actual presentation for this. We're just going to do a demo of how to actually find OER and ZTC resources. So we're going to see how we do, basically just running it like we would a demo. So I'm going to share my screen. Now, I am starting with the LibGuide that I created for the Kalinga College faculty. Here we have on the homepage, you can watch the introduction video. You can go and look at the why videos and scroll through all of the why. But we're going to start today with finding OERs. Now, there are two main ways to do this. You can start with a top down or a bottom up method. But before you do any of that, I strongly recommend you go to the ASCCC OERI list. So right here, I have a whole bunch of lists for you. I have different tutorials you can scroll down through, lots of different ways to find specific images that are Creative Commons. But if you don't know where to start, start with the ASCCC OERI. So this is a discipline specific list. Now, the Academic Senate for California Community Colleges Open Education Resource Initiative has been going for a number of years, and it has lovely, beautiful, curated lists depending on what subject you are in. So for instance, I have 18 units left in a master's in fine art. So say I wanted to look at courses here, and it does it by CID. So if you do not know your CID, you can go to c-id.net, come here, you go to courses, you go to search, Okay, you go to this college type, we're in a community college. All right, you can go to a specific college if you want. So we are in Kalinga College, CO, Kalinga College. Say we wanna go to specifically just art, okay, art history. And it's gonna show us, okay, so our course is Art 42, but the CID is ARTH 100. So this is a way you can find your CID if you don't know it off the top of your head. And then going again to this ASCCC OERI discipline specific list, it'll actually give you specific ones. So ART, A-R-T-H 100 right here. These are all the ones that it recommends. Now, someone put this list together who is a subject expert like yourselves. And you can click on these links and actually go and explore them. Okay, so this is, look at this, Introduction to Art Appreciation, okay? And here's the book. Every single interface is gonna be a little different. Now this can be a little challenging if you don't have the same digital literacy skills. Sometimes you have to scroll through it. Other times you just click on these links and you follow around and you'll find a PDF version. It really varies depending on where it's housed. This is Pressbooks. This is one of the bigger repositories. So you can read the book right here. Sometimes it'll have a thing over here saying like LMS integration or different options for a PDF download. All right, and then here you have the actual contents of the book. You can open it up and you can actually go through and read the book, okay? So this is how you can find an OER and this is called a top-down strategy. So we're starting with full book, full concepts. We're starting with those really broad overview. We're looking for art and we're specifically looking for ARTH 100. And you can scroll through and you can look at entire books and decide if this is a good one that would fit your needs. If you find one that you like or you find a couple that you like, you can integrate these into your class just like you would any other textbook. Good to go, easy breezy cover girl. This is one on LibreText. LibreText is another one of the largest houses basically of OERs. And this is another one. Each of these boxes is a chapter, okay? Each one of these that you click on, you can go through. And each one of these is a section. So they've chunked it for you very similar to poker. You can also download the full book, download the chapter. You can also download and import into LMS. This right here, if you click this button right here, you'll see it just downloaded up here in the corner an LM, an IMSCC file that then you would just upload into your Canvas page. And in your Canvas page, you would import it as a um, Canvas export package, Canvas import package. And in doing so, you would have this fully integrated directly into your Canvas page. So if that's something you guys want, I can make a video on that as well. So once we've scrolled through, this is the top down method where you can look at a whole bunch of different books. Often it looks like this and you have to be like, where's the actual book though? View the conductor page, right? And you can look around, see if you can't find it. And sometimes it'll take you a little while to find the actual book itself, okay? This one looks like it's in some sort of editing mode. So that is one way to do it. And it is definitely top down where we're looking at really big picture and then we're trying to find what we want from the really big picture. This is another one, open course library. This one right here, you might be like, well, how do I actually get to the textbook? You have to click this little course button. And it's just a matter of scrolling through until you figure it out. Now, every single interface is gonna be a little different, can be a little challenging. So this is option number one. 
If, however, you're like, you know what, Rachel, that's way too much work. Um, I don't want to do that and assess things. I only need very specific things. You can do a, um, what I'm going to call bottom up method. And for that, we're going to go to a new page. I can scroll over on my computer. I'm in the way here. I'll put this down here at the bottom. All right. So, Sarah, like, Rachel, I just need something very specific on art history modern. And then you want to type in a very specific um, repository. So, LibreText is one of my favorites. Okay. So, this is going to take you to specific sections of a specific repository. So now, instead of looking at a full book and having to assess it, we are just looking at this one section, Introduction to Modern Art, Contemporary Art, and we're looking at just this section right here. And if we like this section, we could integrate just that section. So if you found that you couldn't find a single book or you want to pull from multiple different books, sometimes it might be helpful to do what I call a bottom-up search method, where you take a keyword, very specific, and then you add in LibreText or Pressbooks, and search for it that way. Now up here in the top, you can see the actual thing. So you're like, maybe I actually want the whole thing. You go back to the chapter, not just the section. So maybe you decide you like all three of these and you want to integrate all of them. Or say you're like, you know, somehow I didn't get this book before. Oh, but this is the book. I like this book right here. Maybe I'll just do this entire book. Or maybe I want to combine this book with another book. So that is a bottom up strategy on how you can do that. So this is a list right here on our LibGuide page starting with the ASCCC OARI discipline specific list, okay? And then scrolling down, these are all the main repositories you can go to. LibreText is one of my favorites. Just because it is free to use, you can, and it's also free for people to author, to get started authoring on. So this is a great one. You can type in anything specifically here. I worked with a chemistry instructor and as someone who knows nothing about science, this was challenging. And we were looking for something specific on matter, and scientific method, scientific method, and chemistry, chemistry, okay? So you can just type in keywords and it can try to bring you up to specific ones that you can look for in specific libraries and you can do searches. So maybe this is too many, but say we want scientific method and chemistry, okay? And we wanna search. You can search for things this way and it's showing that there's 594 assets. So say you wanna go and look at these different things. This is another way to search for very specific things. So depending on what you're doing, if you just want to browse, it might be helpful to start with the LibreText libraries. All right, and if you go to here and you go to platforms and libraries, this is going to show you all the different libraries right here that they have. So say you're a chemist, okay? This is taking you to the LibreText chemistry library, and this is their bookshelf. So when you click on here, this is going to be big picture browsing, right? So you've got these, each one of these is a, bookshelf. So say we go to general chemistry and within general chemistry, we have each of these as a different book. See how it's got the parentheses next to it. OpenStax is one of the largest um, OER resources. So say we want to go to chemistry 1E OpenStax. All right. And we click on this. That's going to take us to this book and allow us to browse individual chapters. So you're like, this is great. You know what, Rachel? I like chemistry first edition from OpenStax. I just want to use this. This is great. You can download the full book right here. You can download the LMS in an IMSCC file and import it directly into your Canvas shell for your students to never have to click out, download a full PDF. You can also print entire book files. And I have found that this is very helpful for certain students. Um, we also have a Rising Scholars program, and so sometimes you need to be able to purchase books. So there are ways that you can print things. It'll have options. So this is downloading a PDF for me to be able to print it with a local printer right here. So there's lots of different options for printing this one. The buy print copy didn't work. Usually they're anywhere from five to $15 a piece, depending on how big the book is. So this is a way that you can go about searching for books. So say we again, go back though to our list, okay? You're like, Rachel, that's just too overwhelming. I don't wanna do that, okay? Here's where we can talk about something simpler. This takes you through the screenshots of how to use history and LibreText as an example. And it takes you through the, what we just did, which would be, kind of like a bottom-up method where you're doing a keyword search plus a specific OER repository. And then I wanna take you through how to find OER images really quickly, because this is one that people always wanna have an image and then do a reverse image search to try to figure out who owns it. And that can be super confusing and difficult. So I strongly recommend instead starting with Google and just type in Creative Commons images. And for me, it comes up because I use it all the time and you go to the CC Search Portal Creative Commons. Looks like this. All right, now, no matter what you look in here, this is specific to Creative Commons images. 
So say we want something related to cats, okay? Now, over here on the right-hand side, this even lets you use it commercially, meaning you could use it to sell a third-party product and you have permission to do so, but we're not doing that because we're an OER, okay? And I say I'm not gonna even modify it. The less filters you have, the bigger your results are, okay? And say, I'm like, you know what? This right here is just, it's a perfect image for me. I'm gonna use this image. You can get the image here. You can also save the image, right? And then right here, this rich text, this gives you everything you need to know to put underneath it and how it can be used. So this is saying that this is a license under a CC by NCSA license. This means you have to credit the person who made it, which in this case is this person right here. It's non-commercial, meaning I can't make money off of this image, but I'm free to use it. It's also SA, meaning anything that I do with this would have to be shared under the same license. So it gives you all that you need right there, ready to go. You scroll down, it's gonna give you other similar images to go with it. It is much easier to find images within a database like this where everything is already OER rather than going to Google, typing in cats images, right? And being like, oh, I really like this image. And then trying to figure out if it is OER. The problem is that this is obviously a paid image. It's a Getty image. It's created by this person right here. And it's under their intellectual property. So we cannot use this image. We cannot distribute this image without this person's permission. And we probably have to pay Getty images in order to use this. So I've met a lot of faculty who come to me with very favorited images that they wanna use. And they say, Rachel, can I use this? And we can do a reverse image search to look it up, but it's much more challenging and it takes exponentially longer. Starting instead with something like the Openverse here and searching for things within this where you know it's gonna be free and it's gonna give you proper attributions is gonna be an easier go of it. So that's what I recommend for images. Okay, you can also go to Images Advanced Search under Google, so this is Google Advanced Search, and under Usage Rights, you can put free to use and share, free to use and share, even commercially, and you can type in, you know, the words. You're still just going to have to be careful because sometimes this is a Wikipedia. It should bring up all free to use, and you still have to do attributions, though, and you'll have to make the attribution yourself. So that is an option there as well. And you can also go to the Flickr Creative Commons. Now, not everything on Flickr is Creative Commons. You have to specifically be looking in this specific element, but this would allow you to look for people who have branded their own images with different versions of Creative Commons. Okay, folks. So that is the basis of how you search for OER. It is just about browsing and picking. You as the subject expert are gonna know what you're looking for, but librarians can help you if you give them very specific elements. So say you're like, Rachel, I have five out of the 10 that I need, or I have eight out of the 10 OERs that I really need, but I'm missing these three key elements, and these are the specific keywords. If you give those to a librarian, especially an OER librarian, they might be able to find you some resources out there or be able to help you remix from a couple different ones. So happy hunting for OERs, and thank you for listening.